Hmm, interesting. All right, now we toss it over to Mark. All right, thanks, Angela. Well, millions of travelers are heading all around the country and all around the world today on Memorial Day. And we tend to be very critical at times about the folks that work security there. Every time they miss something, it makes big headlines. But is it really a problem or is there something else going on here? Well, let's talk to some experts who are actually studying this right now in airport security. Uh, they are Dr. Ryan Olson and uh, Marco Tomasi, an applied behavior analyst. You folks are in town for a conference here. What, what all are you, what are you discussing here while you're in town? Yeah, well, we're uh, attending the 33rd Annual uh, Association for Behavior Analysis Conference, and last night we had a symposium on aviation security, and uh, Marco and I participated. So we don't want to beat up on the folks that, that work security at the airport, but again, the only time we ever hear about what they're doing is when they miss something. And it seems that they miss something fairly often, and everybody's very critical of that. Everybody says, oh, gosh, you know, I, I'm sure I could do a better job. You're finding that that's not the case. Tell me about your studies. Yeah, uh, well, I'll, I'll begin. My study focuses on the screener job. Marco is behind the scenes in the complex uh, security environment back there. But um, the main issue is that our research is finding when threats are scarce, it it tends to weaken our search behaviors. When threats are scarce, that means if you see thousands and thousands of passengers and nobody's up to something, when that one person does come through, you don't necessarily pick up on the clues. Why is that? Well, you first got to discriminate between complex stimuli, which is tough all by itself, but where we're focused is that uh, the chance to detect a threat is actually a really rewarding event that it encourages all sorts of good searching vigilant behaviors and um, so this is where my research is focused on how threats uh, encourage that sort of vigorous searching and scanning. So I guess if I'm understanding you right, if you actually find something, you actually find a legitimate threat, that heightens your senses and for at least a certain period of time, you're more vigilant and more in tune to the threat. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so since we're going so far in between, how do we keep these people tuned up? Well, uh, that's what we're studying is different schedules of threat presentation and how that encourages the right kinds of behaviors. So maybe you would go in and put, um, you know, an artificial threat, you know, a, a dummy gun or something like that into somebody's luggage and, and in essence reward these folks for finding these threats, but you do it more often so that they stay at a higher level of attention. Yeah, yeah, okay. and, and there are programs involved uh, uh, on that issue, but that, that's the slice we're studying and I think it's really promising. Very interesting. Okay, now, Marco, what are you finding out about behavior? I'm finding very similar things as opposed to Ryan's frontline workers. Um, my workers are behind the scenes. They're looking at basically the eye in the sky. They handle all those security cameras. And they have, instead of having one screen to look at with thousands of passengers, now we have 20 to 30 screens. But one person trying to look at all these screens and see uh, and catch suspicious behavior. So maybe just one person walking through one of those 20 screens does something suspicious, and how do we really expect people to, to notice that? Exactly. You've got all these people coming through on all these screens, and we've got to have one person selectively attend to one screen and then respond. And, you know, these are well-trained workers. They're working hard, but the environment is working against them. Now, we were talking here before the segment started about that probably the nastiest word in the American vocabulary right now in terms of security is the term profiling. And yet, no matter how you slice it, you are looking for a certain type of behavior, a certain analysis uh, of an individual that is going to raise your suspicion. That by definition is profiling of sorts. But now you're focusing on the behavior as opposed to just a physical appearance or a nationality. That's right. Okay. And behavior is universal. I mean, everyone behaves and you can see behavior anywhere. And that's what's great about this conference we're having here because we span everything, everything from autism all the way to Homeland Security. So are, are we getting better at security at the airport then, I guess, by focusing on behaviors? And we can't talk about some specific behaviors because that tips people off. Getting better? It's getting better. Okay. Well, interesting to have you guys come in here and update us. Great. Enjoy your time here in San Diego, and thanks for spending a little bit of Memorial Day with us. Oh, pleasure to be here. Okay. Good to see you. All right. Uh,